Hey, good morning, guys. I'm the Tech Prepper. First, I hope everybody's uh, doing well, um, hanging in there. Uh, second, let's talk about this video. Um, I was uh, trying to figure out a video idea for today, and what I came up with was, since I'm doing so many RV uh, projects right now, just to get it back in shape, um, I've been spending a lot of time in here, and it is at the... Uh, far side of my property and I don't get good wireless coverage here. I'm about uh, 60 to 66 meters away uh, from here to the wireless access point in the house. So uh, not much in the way of internet access. So I was thinking we could do a couple things here um, that would be beneficial to the prepper community, RV community, um, and also be cost sensitive at the same time. So I want to go ahead and put in place a wireless uh, repeater or extender so that I actually can extend my uh, wireless coverage out to this portion of the property. And while there are some good options uh, that for purchase uh, today, um, I decided to be a little bit more budget sensitive and I've decided to go with my very old uh, but pretty much reliable uh, Linksys WRT54G router. This is the uh, 2.4 gigahertz wireless router, uh, A, B, A and B modes, uh, that was introduced, I think, in circa 2004. I've got a very early revision. I've got the uh, version 2.0 model, and I've used it over the last 10 to 15 years uh, for various projects, uh, primarily to do wireless, either bridging um, or uh, function as a repeater. Um, so that's the subject of this video. And then I also want to tie it into uh, off the grid since I'm building a portable system. So let's talk about the why I'm doing all this. Um, so number one, I want to be able to work in the RV, uh, both for fun and professionally during the day. It's nice to have an inside outside kind of feel. Uh, two, I want to be able to test the system and see if I can actually have it be a fully off the grid uh, system with solar battery uh, power and keep that on the, the inexpensive by going with the Linksys uh, router that I already have. And in fact, uh, I think I was at a, um, a Goodwill maybe six months ago before all this craziness started. And these things are going for like three bucks, uh, sometimes with and without the uh, AC power adapter. Uh, so it's a really inexpensive option. So uh, let me take a quick look at my notes here, make sure I'm not missing anything. So yeah, let's talk about the house. So the Linksys uh, router, I decided to go with um, a firmware called DD-WRT. Uh, and this has been out for a while. There are other uh, firmwares uh, available for it, uh, but I've been using this for a number of years. In fact, the version I had on there um, was from 2010. So the very first thing I did was go to the DDWRT website and I looked up the uh, make and model number of my router and I was able to download a recent firmware. Uh, and I believe mine is from 2019. So I did upgrade it uh, nine years from the version I had on there previously and then ultimately 15 years uh, upgrade from where it was when I first got it in 2004. Um, so that was the first step. Uh, the instructions, uh, uh, I don't know if an English native speaker wrote them. They're not the greatest, but uh, it's easy enough to, to work through. I'll link below um, in the description on the instructions I went through. And this will vary from router to router. So once that was all in place, uh, I decided to look at the um, uh, repeater bridge mode, uh, which is a mode that I actually like for what I need to do. So again, my goal is to extend my wireless coverage. Um, I didn't need to do any complex routing. So the way this works is I have my wireless access point from air fiber in my house. And basically, um, there are some configuration steps on the DDWRT site to put it into uh, the bridge uh, repeater mode. And uh, what I like about this mode is that it's really quite simple. So the main access point is still responsible for uh, routing, DNS, and DHCP leases. Um, all this radio basically does, the secondary one, the Linksys, is basically just connecting to it as a client and then having a virtual access point 
um, and then allowing you to, to connect. So all my devices while I'm on this network give me access to the same subnet inside the house, which means I can access my network, uh, the computers inside the house, my printers, my other devices um, out here with the added bonus of having extended wireless coverage. So really quite simple. Um, the other thing I wanna show you, I went ahead and I've tried a few speed tests out here. And while they're not great for what I need to be able to uh, check email, surf the web, um, even stream a video on one device, it works fine. Um, I'm getting about one to 1.5 megabits out here. And, and like I said, that sounds horrible today with people you know, pushing 150 megabits or higher, uh, but it does work. Uh, I know these are speeds from when broadband was first introduced you know, in the early 2000s, but trust me, it works. You don't need more than this for what we're trying to do here off the grid. Um, the second thing I want to show you is uh, the setup that I have right now and where I'm going to take it. All right, so here on the left, we have the Linksys uh, router itself. It's the 2.4 gigahertz model, and um, it's running off of AC power. The way that I have it connected to AC power is through a 400 watt inverter. This is a $30 uh, inverter from... Uh, Walmart. And then I have uh, the inverter uh, connected directly to a 12 volt battery. This is the 4 amp hour BioWino battery. And then um, I have the battery plugged into a inline volt watt amp meter. And uh, as you can see here, for the most part, this thing is consistently drawing about 0.9 amps. So this battery will give me a little bit over four hours of usage. Um, and what's nice with at least this model inverter I have, the amps are not going to, the current draw is not gonna require that the fan kick on. I noticed that on this model, anything over about 1.5 to two amps will start to kick on the fan. So this is extremely quiet. So I'm gonna use this as the base system for a uh, solar power plant that I'm going to uh, show probably in the next video if the parts come. And uh, I do have the BioWino 60 watt folding panels and the solar charge controller. Uh, so I'm gonna mount effectively uh, the inline uh, volt watt amp meter, the 400 watt inverter. Uh, I'll have the battery pretty close to it. Uh, there will be uh, a battery disconnect, uh, a series of terminal blocks for other uh, 12 volt uh, systems. So I think it's gonna be a pretty cool little project. So hopefully uh, this will speak to some of the preppers and hams. Um, and it's a nice easy way to get into a uh, first solar project. And then obviously we can scale that out later on for larger systems. All right guys, so uh, this is the tech prepper signing out. Be strong, be safe and uh, be prepared.